الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه أما بعد our respected brothers and sisters in Islam Allah سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran يا أيها الذين آمنوا اصبروا وصابروا ورابطوا واتقوا الله Allah سبحانه وتعالى is calling us to exercise patience self restraint have patience and patience in the Quran according to the ulama it's been mentioned in so many verses and some say closer to 90 verses in the Quran Allah is talking about patience because of the importance of patience and patience there is no reward for patience but Jannah may Allah make us to be among patient then we ask, when do we need to have patience or to exercise patience? Patience are divided into three categories. The first, to have patience in worshipping Allah. The second, to have patience in committing sin. And the third, to have patience when you have trials and tribulations. How do we understand this subject? The first, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has paid ordain unto the ummah to pray five times a day fast the ramadan give alms to the poor and then perform the hajj these worship are practical you have to bring them practically by using your body so without patience you will not be able to worship allah in the right way because allah didn't only say make salah in the way that you want allah has laid rules and conditions and taught by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in a, in a hadith, whether he made us to understand the way we have to pray, he says, "Sallu kemarai tuhuni," that you should pray just as you see me, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, pray. So we ask, how did he pray? He laid conditions and rules. You have to have ablution. Then while you pray. You have to go in accordance with his prayer. When he lifts his hands, he makes sure the hands come straight in line with the ears or a little bit behind or a little bit forward. But do we do that? No. You come in the salah, what happens? It's Allah, what? Because you have something doing. Because you're thinking about something. You have an appointment. You would like to go to work. You like to, you like to do. Who is telling you this while you pray? It's Satan. So the moment you go into prayer, Satan will come to you. If you are a businessman, he will come and let you make all the calculations you do about your sales. Sales of today. Telling you in your prayer that you should buy this and sell this and so on. He is talking to you while you pray. So you will not be able to have patience to pray. Without patience, you will not be able to offer. The same applies to anyone who is working or going to school. Or you have problems when you enter or you go into prayer. That's when Satan comes to you and reminds you about everything that is going to what? Afflict you. So without patience, you cannot be able to pray well. We pray even after the prayer, you ask the brother, which surah did you read after Fatiha? Wallah, you will not remember. Because we have memorized. Alhamdulillah. So we bring them, and later on, we don't think about anything. Chew, pass, you chew, pour, pass, and then you forget. No, you cannot do that with Allah. Look at fasting. Sometimes, when before the fasting, we say that. It's too long hours, we are not able to have patience. So we would like to break our fast with another country, that is Islamic. We want fatwa for everything in our deed. When the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has laid down the rules and conditions, and these rules and conditions are from Allah, because Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى And he, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, does not say anything of himself. He only says what he's been inspired to tell you. So if he says anything, or whatever he says, we have to obey. Why after him, every day we want fatwa? Eat with your right hand, you say, okay, say, I cannot eat with my right hand because I'm born a left person or left me. You want fatwa to eat with your left. Everything in our day today, we want to change it. Why can't we go in accordance? Allah says in the Quran, Umar Atakum Rasul Fahudu, whatever the Prophet Muhammad has given you, instructed you to do, do it. And whatever he forbids, abstain. That 
tell someone everything. Look at Hajj. A lot of brothers, you can be able to have more than three thousand dollars, more than three thousand what euros. Go and make the Hajj next year, next year. Every time next year until you lose your money. Next year, next year until you would say, I will only go to Hajj when I become old. No, Allah wants your ibadah when you are young. This is where Allah wants. Because if you become old, Allah tell the angels, don't write everything that this, this old man is doing. Why? Because I, Allah, have mercy for the old. He cannot be able to do. And now that he wants to come to Allah, no. You are young. You have the money, brother. Allah say, wa fis Your world is in the sky. is in the heavens. So spend your money for the sake of Allah. And Allah will give you more than what you are expecting. So without patience, we cannot be able to worship Allah. So patience in worshiping Allah is to worship Allah in accordance with the rules that Allah has ordained and taught by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then patience in committing sin. What does that mean? For instance, you want to drink alcohol, you want to commit adultery, or you want to commit fornication, you want to take someone's money, you want to do, you want to do, you want to do. Think about the sin you are going to commit. For how long are you going to enjoy it? And think about the one who sees you even in darkness, Allah. While you do that, you are causing his anger. Can you meet him on the day of judgment? No, because you have a problem. But definitely you will meet him and he will record everything that you have done and you are going to pay if he does not forgive you. Tell me you about a story of that brother in Ramadan in Saudi Arabia, it is not in the days of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In these our days, the Sheikh who gave that lecture was saying about himself. On the night of Al Qadr, the holiest month of or the holiest night of the whole night of the year, while he was returning after the Hajjud in Mecca at Mukarramah, then he saw a car that means a traffic light. Another car was just by his side, and in that car there was heavy music. He said, let me try to advise this brother, <laughs> since he is doing what is not actually pleasing Allah. He got down from his car, and he went to the second to the next car. He said, "Assalamu alaikum." The brother said, go away from me, I don't want to any hear this salam. Then he said, I will not go, you are my brother. Then the, he asked him, where are you coming from? The sheikh said, I'm coming from the haram. I just performed Laylat al with the Jama'ah. Then he said, then you have to go away from me because I'm dirty. He said, why are you dirty? He said, because I just went to commit adultery. And I'm, I'm clean. Don't get closer to me. Then he said, Sheikh told him, told him that no, Allah does not abandon anybody. No matter how much sins you have committed, you are my brother. My advice for you is what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says that when whoever has committed a sin and then he knows that Allah is there to forgive sins and then he goes home and wash his body and then perform two rakah and then pray that Allah should forgive him, Allah will forgive him. Then immediately the guy just sped away, okay? He drove away, doesn't want to care. But while he was driving home, he was thinking about what the Sheikh told him. When he got home, it was ringing in his mind. Two Raka and Allah will forgive me. Two Raka and Allah will forgive him, me. Then he went to the bathroom and then washed his body. Then he prayed or performed two Raka. In the following year, or after that Ramadan, he went to perform Hajj. He happened to meet this Sheikh and then he narrated the story to the Sheikh. He said, Sheikh, when you informed me about what happened, I went home, I washed myself, and then performed two raka. After saying salam, it seemed to me that cold water was poured on my body and washed me of my sin. Since from that day, I hated anything that would displease Allah. And this year, as you see me, I performed the hajj on foot. I didn't take any transport. And now I am memorizing the Quran and I wish Allah would make me memorize everything. Brothers, Allah is very, very merciful. No matter how much sins you have committed, know that the one who has created you, Allah, is merciful. The Prophet Muhammad says, if you commit a sin, someone ask him, I have committed a sin and I went to Allah. He said, Allah will forgive you your sin. He said, second time, he said, Allah will forgive you. He said, the third time, the Prophet Muhammad 
said, Allah will never turn unless you turn. Then finally, have patience in case of trials and tribulations. Someone can say, there's no time, I'll give only one example. Let's see. Prophets and messages of Allah, they have so many trials and tribulations. Now let's look at Isa alayhi salam, and then his mother Maryam alayhi salam, and then the grandmother, the grandmother Hannah. She was a lady who didn't used to have children, a barren, okay? She could not have children. The one day she saw two birds, like a bird and her child. How merciful the bird was so having on her child, then she felt that she should also have a child. She prayed to Allah, Rabbi Habli min as salihin wa Allah, give me children, a child, even not any child, but a child that be faithful. And her wish was that Allah should give her a boy. So she would give the boy to the mosque or to the temple to worship Allah. And instead of the boy, Allah gave her a girl that was Maryam alayhi salam. And what happened? She didn't actually show any remorse because it's a child from Allah. She said, before that, she said, Allah, and make my child, that means my child and her offsprings free of Satan. The Prophet Muhammad sallam, mentioned that any child who is born, Satan uses his hand to wipe the child. So you hear the child crying because chance of Satan is preparing the child for the evil he is going to do toward the child. Everyone, he said, but not the mother of Isa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam because of the dua of the grandmother of Isa alayhi salam. So Allah gave a child that was Maryam. And she still gave the child to the temple. So anytime she is having a period, then she leaves the temple. In the temple, Allah gives her food of winter and summer, summer and winter. Zakaria alayhi salam, who was taking care of her, was in surprise. How do you get this? Of course, from Allah, Allah sent angels to bring her the food. So her will was to get a boy, but Allah gave her a girl, and then she thanked Allah that there is no boy like a girl. So she gave preference to the girl. And through that girl, that's Maryam alayhi salam, Allah gave her Isa alayhi salam, and they made him a prophet, and made him to speak at a time when a child cannot speak. So brothers, says in Islam, you don't have to give up. If you want something from Allah, have your faith in you that Allah will accept it. Ask Allah and have hope in Allah and Allah will accept. No matter how the situation, no matter the problem, no matter the calamity, know that Allah has done it and Allah can do it at any time. So brothers, and in Islam, let's try to go in accordance with the deen of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is our deen, and he is our leader, and Allah wants us to always make sure that we follow his practice, his ways, obey him. And we have to understand that there is no amount of problems that Allah cannot solve. We know about our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with all the trials. Allah relieved him, and Allah made him a universal prophet. Ayu alayhi salam had money and he was very nice and everything. Allah made him to lose everything and Allah gave him sickness. What happened? When he had patience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah returned. He used to have 14 children, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took life of every child. They all died. He buried his own children. And when Allah cured him of his sickness, Allah said, Ayu, your 14 children are in Jannah. If you want, I will return them to you just as I took them. But if you want, I keep them in Jannah and give you other things, give you other children. Jannah, Allah allow them there. The world is so much a problem. So in place of the 14 children, Allah gave them 26 children. The 14 were boy, girl, boy, girl, seven boys, seven girls, and so it was. Brothers and sisters Islam, let's put our trust in Allah and know that there is no one who can give, there is no one who can take. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wahiran ya yaqwata al-Islam.